Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Karu Culture. Welcome if you're new here. Today we'll be talking about what not to do. I repeat, what not to do when applying for apprenticeships, graduate roles, internships, traineeships, whatever ship, whatever role, whatever job, don't do these things. You're basically going to be learning from all of my mistakes ever since I changed it up, the offers they came rolling in. Don't forget to subscribe to your girl and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Let's get into it. Do not, <laughs> do not, please do not start your application season process when applications open. You're gonna get swamped, you're gonna feel overwhelmed. Especially if you're in education, you don't want to be stressed because imagine you're at uni or doing your A-levels, you don't want the stress of having to maintain studying and getting exceptional grades, as well as pushing out 10 applications a week. You don't want that pressure on you. What I would recommend is that in the summer prior to application season, I would sit down, create my application tracker, what divisions I'm interested in, what companies I'm interested in, their start date, their process, whether it's a phone interview, video interview, assessment center, and their deadlines. Just making sure I've got that all in a spreadsheet and then start creating your cover letters because cover letters takes a lot of time. It takes so, so much time and you don't want the stress of writing basically mini essays about why you absolutely adore a company when you have your real life essays to do and submit. I can't stress this enough, especially because after you've submitted your application, that's not where it ends. It's an ongoing process. So lightening that burden will make your life so, so much easier. I mean, having those cover letters prepped, having your CVs prepped, ready to go. Practicing all your psychometric testing in advance also will really, really help you when it comes to applications. I mean, you're more likely to do a lot better and feel a lot more at ease knowing you're prepared and ready to go. It will also add to your confidence. Do not apply too early. Bear with me, walk with me here. You don't wanna to apply too early because a lot of companies start opening their applications around July time and they still have their summer interns to sort and go through and say who are we going to take over and offer the graduate role so you applying as soon as that application opens you're going to be waiting around for so long to hear anything back from them i would say find a sweet spot take your time you've got time the sweet spot is kind of around september times just because that's when it's basically you hit the ground running you go 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 I forgot to mention, you should not apply too early because if all interns fill the graduate positions available you risk the opportunity of not being able to apply to another position. Especially if you only have one submission for that firm. Also, you do not want to waste time putting in a redundant application. And on the back of that, please don't apply late. General rule of thumb, apply at a sweet spot. Don't apply too, too early for those that open up whilst they have interns and don't apply too late where it's maybe a one in a millionth chance that your application gets picked up. Do not apply to anywhere with a CV longer than a page. My amazing university, the career department, they were like, sure, two pages on your CV? That's fine. Whoever's reading your application, you don't know them. You don't know what their tolerance is. What I did is I wrote down everything. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was like three pages. And then I just cut it down. And I love to chat, so you can imagine the amount of waffle I had on my CV. But once you start cutting it down and scaling back, you'll actually find where the real value lies in your experience and what you have done. Also, please make sure it's in PDF format. Like, I'm pretty sure all applications tell you to submit with PDF format. But in case you need to hear this, please submit in PDF format. I was definitely that individual at university that thought I could work smart and not hard. But when it came to cover letters, I promise you, did not get me far. If your application says cover letter, if it mentions cover letter anywhere, even though it may not stress that you need to upload one, you should upload one. When I say you should upload one, you need to upload one. <laughs> It's so jarring because it's just like, man, now I've got to go and do this research and I've got to pull this information from here, pull this information from here. And yeah, it's a long process, but it pays off at the end. 
you're just gonna have to grit your teeth and do it you can't have one cover letter for all of the firms that you choose to apply to it's just not going to work they're gonna know when I say they're gonna know, I don't know how they know, but they're gonna be able to tell. The only cheat sheet I can give you guys is that why the firm, why the role, why you? For the why the role and why you, if it's for the same job, literally very similar job description, you can use the same last two paragraphs. Obviously you're gonna have to tweak it a bit, just a bit, to tailor to the firm, but the first paragraph, why the firm, that's going to have to be different every single time. A tailored cover letter definitely, you can tell. And the reason why I have stood out is because I took the time to do the research, put in that effort and that work. So yeah, I'm sorry guys, you're just gonna have to do it really. <laughs> and also your cover letter, please put it in a PDF format just like your cv everything pdf it is so much more clear so much more concise i think with these things you just have to think if you had to read like thousands of these what would you want to see you wouldn't want to see something messy untidy you'd want to see something that displays brevity short concise gets to the point you handle your business you're on your way <laughs> it's so important to me because i feel like it was my biggest obstacle please do not doubt or limit yourself when it, it was me at university in um my second year and i was applying to places i always just procrastinated because i thought what was the point i'm not gonna get it anyway no you are more than deserving to you are more than able to do the job so just put that application through 90 percent of it is just believing in yourself and your confidence wow this sounds so corny <laughs> But it's true, I promise you. Now it's just like, what I go after, that's what I plan to get. Even if the job description has one or two bullet points that you're like, yeah, I tick those, but I don't tick the other 10, still apply. If that's the job that you want to do, you can do it. When I tell you, I used to freak out about this so much to the point where I would only put in my application on the day of the deadline, as in like an hour before the deadline. No, go for it, go for what you wanna do. Like, the worst they can say is no, and the most that they can say is yes, you got the job, so. Yeah, please go for what you wanna do in life, no matter how hard or challenging it may seem. <laughs> and that's a wrap so thank you so much for tuning in today guys i hope you enjoyed today's video remember to hit the subscribe button give your girl a massive thumbs up and i will catch you in the next one bye no i have awesome friends literally awesome friends that know everything